All right, what is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. So as you can see behind me, the STI is bumperless. And as you can tell by the title of this thumbnail, Killer B sent us some more goodies for the STI. So we're gonna go over this here in a minute. Um, but this is essentially a reliability modification that you never thought you needed, that you didn't even know existed, but one that I highly suggest for everyone out there who is running an EJ in their car, which is going to be pretty much every Subaru that's not an FA20, but that's every Subaru that's not an FA20, essentially. So essentially what this little elbow does is it helps smooth out the turbulence of the coolant flow, leaving the water pump going through the radiator and the rest of the system in the car. So it is a lot more efficient than the stock one that's in the car. And we'll compare the stock one to this one after we get it off. Uh, but kind of the steps to installing this is you are gonna have to drain all the coolant out of your radiator and out of the car to be able to swap this because as soon as you go to pull that water pump housing off, it's just gonna shoot coolant everywhere. So we are gonna have to drain it, which does kind of suck. So you are gonna have to replace the coolant. I have about two and a half gallons over on the bench. Uh, but let me walk you guys through the tools you're gonna need to do this and uh, kind of waste materials that you're gonna need as well. So there's really not too much you need. You're gonna need a clip puller, obviously, to pull off your bumper. So, I mean, you don't need that for this. Uh, but you're gonna need a 10 millimeter to be able to pull off the old water pump housing. Um, I This is the first time I've ever gotten to use this funnel. So uh, greatly appreciate the dono to the channel for the funnel. So we actually get to use that now. Uh, and then you were gonna need some coolant. So I have two full ones and then one that's about half full that we're going to be reusing into the STI. So I'm just gonna end up draining this coolant. We'll dispose of it properly. So that way we are not throwing coolant out into the wilderness for all of the local cats to drink, get sick and die because nobody wants that. Uh, but the Killer B1 does come with some nice hardware. The Allen key is not supplied. I put that in the bag uh, just when I was grabbing all the tools for this installation. Let's hop over to the car. I'll show you guys where the stock water pump housing elbow is that we're gonna be taking off. And then uh, we'll go through the process of draining the coolant and getting this new one on there. If you're looking at the top of your engine bay, this is going to be a pretty easy way to show you guys, but I'll show you guys underneath the car as well. If you're looking at the top of the engine bay, right down there, your lower radiator hose right there goes to the water pump housing that we're going to be swapping out. So then if we look under the car, you can see right here, right there is the OEM water pump housing that we're going to be pulling out. Super easy to pull out. It's a hose clamp that's going to pop off. We're going to drain all the coolant that way, and then we're going to pull that one off put a seal on there, put the new one on, refill it, burp the system, and uh, we should have much better coolant flow going to the car because these cars do like to run hot. So anything that I can do to help improve cooling on this beautiful EJ that we have going on down here will be beneficial. Keep also the Killer Bee headers, the Killer Bee oil pan, uh, soon to be the Killer Bee like coolant housing dealio. As you can see, I like Killer Bee. So I'm gonna hop under there. I'm going to throw a tray underneath of that lower coolant hose, the one that we're pulling off of that housing. I'm gonna let all the coolant drain for probably like 10 to 12 minutes, uh, just to make sure we get all the residual coolant out. Now, if you're doing a radiator or you're doing anything else coolant oriented, I would suggest doing this modification at that time. So that way you're not having to reuse or buy new coolant for a project like this, like I am. Uh, I'll also have this part linked down below in the description for those who do want it over on Killer Bee's website. Uh, also, once again, huge shout out to them for sending it over. You guys know I appreciate it and you guys know I love your products. Uh, so so let's get this coolant drained and then we will uh, start pulling off that old housing. Once we get the old one off, we will go ahead and compare it to the new one. So a lot less coolant came out of this than I thought was going to. Uh, but as you can see down there, we have the hose off of the water pump housing. Now on the water pump housing, there are two 10 millimeter bolts that hold it to the water pump. Uh, they're gonna be in the exact same location as these. So one on top, one on bottom. Go ahead, pull those two 10 millimeter bolts off and then that guy will pop right out. Um, since I don't have the car jacked up, I don't have a lot of room to show you guys this. So I'm just gonna pop down there. I'm gonna pull those two 10 millimeter bolts off, get that guy off and then we'll compare that one over to this one over here on the bench and I'll show you guys the, uh, the major differences of why this one is better than the OEM one. All right. So I should probably leave this coolant guy. You know, this tool makes life a thousand times easier, I promise. I can feel it. Freedom! Two bolts out. I should probably put this guy back down here just in case we pee everywhere. Dope, that came off a lot easier than I thought. Well, that guy's off. So uh, let's hop over to the bench and uh, take a look at this guy versus the Killer B one. So one thing with this OEM one is, as you can see, when the coolant comes out of the water pump and it goes through this uh, housing, it hits this back wall and then has to go through and out versus this Killer B one over here, as you can see, has a much nicer bend to allow coolant to flow a lot better so it's not as turbulent leaving the water pump. Now with this Killer B one also, you can see that it is coated that will resist heat a little bit better versus this bare aluminum one. But with that being said, you also have a size 
size difference between the two of these. So as you can see, the Killer B one is slightly longer than the OEM one, which shouldn't be an issue, but if it is, you can go ahead and trim your OEM hose down just a little bit if you have to. Now, one more thing I do want to point out between these two is that as you can see, the Killer B flange is a little bit thinner than the OEM one is. That is the reason why you are provided with new hardware from Killer B. Now, let's say you accidentally lose this, this hardware that comes with your water pump housing. Not a huge deal. You could probably get away with using the OEM hardware. Just know that you might have a little bit of excess bolt on there and you might have to stack a washer on there or two. Uh, but if you do lose it, Killer B can probably send you some new one if uh, for like five bucks or something like that. I don't know how much they charge for hardware. Uh, but I'm stoked to get this in the car. So let's go ahead. Let's get this guy bolted back up. Let's get that hose put back on here. And then we can go through and start the burping process for the coolant and uh, get the car back to spec. I want to run it. I want to let it run a little while just to let uh, coolant fl flow through this after the thermostat opens up because you do need to remember that this does sit on your water pump. Your thermostat is right behind this. So, I mean, if your thermostat ever goes out, this is a very opportune time to install this part. Uh, I think it's on Killer Bee's website for around $100. Uh, well worth it, in my opinion, to help smooth coolant flow and keep your temps down even more with, uh, ha with minimizing non-violent uh, turbulent coolant. I don't even know what that means, but I said it. So let's get this installed on the car and uh, start burping the cooling system. All right, you guys, so installing this new water pump housing is as easy as baking a cake. There's no seals you have to replace, nothing like that. Um, it's already got the seal from the thermostat on there, so that unless your thermostat's bad, you don't need to change it out. But uh, let's go ahead and get this guy installed. It's gonna go on the same way. You're gonna go ahead and use these supplied Allen key bolts to get it on there, and uh, then get the hose back on, and we'll hop up top and start burping this bad boy. Ooh, yeah, I might have to trim that hose just a hair, which is totally fine. That bad boy's on there. Um, yeah, it looks like I'm gonna have to trim this hose a little bit, not a lot. Maybe I'm gonna have to cut off about an inch or so. Uh, but I'll try to get it on there before like trimming just to uh, see because I am a little cute. Ow! Ow! Dude, why am I getting stabbed here? Oh God, I've gotten it on there. Now I cannot get it off. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to trim this hose about maybe an inch or so. Yeah, don't try to put that thing on uh, without trimming the hose because you're gonna hate your life. It sucks. I'll just take off this lower hose and then take it all the way off. Oh, a lot more coolant came out right there. That's all right. It happens. I'm so... I wish I had like five arms and like 10 hands. So after effectively taking a shower and coolant and getting coolant in my eye, now my contact is like bugging the hell out of me. We got it in. So uh, you do need to trim the hose. Uh, I pulled off about an inch and a half of hose and it fits on there perfectly. Uh, there's just, if you try to put that full stock hose onto that water pump housing, it kinks right where it bends from the radiator and you're just not gonna get it on there. See, look, I'm dying. Ah. Um, but now that we have it in, let's go ahead and fill up the car with coolant again. Let's get it burped. So that way we can uh, make, we, we can see how everything's doing because I am curious. Um, just to see if there's gonna be any change in drivability of the car. So it should definitely help smooth out some of that coolant flow coming out of the water pump. Like as you guys saw in the stock housing, like that is a violent turn that coolant has to make in order to get into the radiator and continue to flow. So let me get the camera thrown up on a tripod. Let's get some coolant in the car. Let's get it burped and uh, see how happy she is now or unhappy, depending on if I didn't tighten down one of the bolts all the way, but we'll find out. All right, guys, so this funnel took me a minute to figure out because I was a little bit confused with it, uh, but we got it on there. Oh my goodness, that was like a volcano. Coolant flowing down there. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god, so many bubbles! Spill free my ass, dude. This thing still shoots coolant everywhere. Give this guy a couple more squeezes. Light, gentle. There's no stopping the bubbles. Stop, chill! All right, you guys, so we have filled up our reservoir. We are good on that. Our lower hose is not leaking down there. We've got the funnel in place for us to be able to burp the car. Now, if you don't know how to burp a car, it's extremely easy to do. Uh, you're gonna need your key. You're gonna have to open the door. Once inside of your vehicle, go ahead and put it in accessory mode. So what we're going to do is turn the heat on max. So we're gonna turn that up, turn that all the way up. We're gonna go ahead and put this on defrost like that. And then we're going to start the car. And then we're gonna monitor this and uh, keep an eye on our coolant temp. So we're gonna make sure we get all of the air out of the coolant system. Uh, that is all spilled coolant, my bad happens i can definitely smell it so we're gonna let this run we're gonna get all the air out of the cooling system and then we should be good 
All right, you guys, so we're having an issue where the thermostat is not opening up, letting coolant flow through it. So I'm gonna go down there, I'm gonna give it some more squeezes, I'm gonna let the coolant temp drop down. We got back up to about 212 again. So give me a couple minutes to squeeze some hoses, get this coolant flowing through, and then hopefully we can uh, get it started back up and get these air bubbles out of the coolant system. All right, so you might see something different here. I found out what the issue of, or I found out what the issue was that I uh, couldn't get all the air out. So that funnel that I was using up on this uh, turbo reservoir, the, the funnel was like only feeding this upper line, which is the bypass line that goes straight to the overflow over there. And I was like, why is the overflow filling up so much when doing this? So we're going back to the old school way of how I normally burp cars, just wrapping some rags around this and letting it do its thing. Uh, so now that we're good, I, the car has had about 10 minutes to cool down from 212 degrees. So it should be around 180, 170, I'm guessing. So we're going to start it back up. You might see some coolant splash up. Totally normal. It happens, but let's get it turned on. Let's get these air bubbles out and let's get this thing burped. Oh yeah, as soon as I started the car, the temps went down from 192 down to 181. That funnel was the problem for why it wasn't letting coolant flow in. So coolant temps are hanging out at about 189. Uh, don't judge the way I burp a car. I don't judge the way you eat soup. All right, you guys, so finally got the car bled. Um, the main issue we were having was the funnel. Um, instead of actually putting coolant into the system where we needed it, it was pushing coolant into the overflow tank and just pushing air into the system, which just made burping the car much worse. So that funnel will work on like a standard radiator or a normal upper coolant reservoir, but with the Killer B1, it just won't work. I would not suggest using that funnel. I'd suggest doing a different method, kind of like what I did to get the air out of the system. But after about an hour, we finally got all the air out and we have heat again in the STI, which is nice. So let's get the bumper thrown back on. Let's wrap this video up. We'll talk about that awesome little killer B part one more time. And then, uh, then we'll get out of here and we'll go on with the rest of our day, the rest of our day. Isn't that right, Matt? There you have it. The old stock water pump housing is now off. Uh, no more sharp, stupid bends for the coolant coming out of the water pump. Now, if you are burping your coolant system like I, well, you're gonna have to burp your coolant system, but a couple things. Um, a, make sure you get all the bubbles out of your coolant system. I mean, yeah, there, I mean, there's a lot that can happen. Um, so make sure you are getting all those air bubbles out. Also, you will need to trim that lower coolant hose. I pulled about an inch and a half off. If you don't have hose cutters, I would highly suggest hose cutters. I'll link a set down in the description. They're not too expensive. I think I got mine for like six bucks or something like that on Amazon. But there we have it, the reliability mod you didn't know you needed you didn't know existed and killer b made it so i mean at least a very reputable company is making this part but that's all i got for you guys on this one highly suggest this part if you are swapping out your thermostat or your radiator in the near future but like i said that's all i got for you guys so if you like the video go ahead and hit that thumbs up turn it blue like the badges on the subaru and if you're not already subscribed to the channel bam right there in that bottom my right your left corner on the screen go ahead hit that button subscribe to the channel if you so desire and with that i will catch you guys in the next one peace out homies